Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're talking to a man who will travel to any corner of the country for a barbecue comp. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. Now coming up today, we've got our good friend Lucas Armstrong from Roland Smoke Barbecue and the Jack's Creek Barbecue team coming in today. Uh, this is his third go uh, in the show and it's going to be great to catch up with uh, with what he's been doing now. But before we get into that, I've got some announcements that I do need to run by you. The first is that our podcast partner program is now up and in full swing. We've been uh, working with a couple of different companies over the last couple of months, fine-tuning the process. And I thought I'd just share with you some of the some of the uh, returns that we've been able to to do for these people. So in case study number one, we had five episodes that we partnered with them over. We had a total view and listen combination of 51,221 for a total reach of 171,489. And that is with from the first day that the first episode dropped to 30 days after the last episode dropped. So since then, those numbers will have grown even bigger. And case study number two, the second business that we worked with, we got over five episodes, a total view and listener combination of 82,500 for a total reach of just under a quarter mil. So if you've got a barbecue business and you, you uh, need some help getting your message, getting your brand out to the masses, we've got a solution that can probably help you out with that as well. Now, if you are just at the beginning of your barbecue journey, do head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com. We have our award-winning free ebook available for you there. It's the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. And in that little ebook, you're going to find everything you need to take you from barbecue zero to hero. You're going to have no more burnt sausages and you're going to have a much better time out there on your grill. Now, if you are joining us today live for the podcast recording in the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue community on Facebook, I want to say welcome to you. It's great to have you here. Please put your comments and your questions into the uh, comments section under the video there on Facebook, and later on, we'll pop them up on the screen. Make sure the language is clean. Shane, talking to you. Okay, but uh, if you're not there yet, do come join us over in the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue community, um, as well as being where we do these live po- uh, podcast recordings. Um, it is also just a great place to hang out and just talk all about barbecue. Now, if you're watching this again later on YouTube, please remember to give us the thumbs up, the subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. If you're catching us on Facebook, give us a like, a share, and a comment. On Instagram, on our IGTV channel, it's the cute little love heart and give us a follow. Make sure you do that as well. And if you are listening on a podcasting app, particularly if it's Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star rating and review. It really helps push us up the charts. In the last 30 days, we've been as high as number three on the Australian food podcasts charts and number six on the American podcast charts. So it's a huge help and we really do appreciate that. Now, as I did say at the top of the episode, we have Lucas Armstrong. Now, he's one of the original uh, Aussie barbecue competitors here. Um, he's been seen everywhere. He often competes solo, and he thinks nothing of traveling anywhere in the country. Um, and anywhere he goes, he'll turn up, and you can bet that he'll be taking home some trophies. Um, he, now, I did say he has been on the show twice before. He was actually one of my original guests from the first 10-episode series we did. Uh, way back in at the end of 2016, I think. Um, And I'm sure he's going to rib me about how that went down later on. And he was also in uh, episode 89, which was just over a year ago, and we were catching up on his 2019 competition year. So um, I think that's probably about all you need to hear from me. Let's get Lucas in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Lucas, mate, welcome back to the confessional, my friend. How are you today? Good, buddy. How you doing? Mate, I am great. I'm really good. And I just want to say, sir, you are looking fantastic. Oh, I'm, I'm trying. So I, 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 I take I'm it... Correctly cleaned up, just in case, you know. <clears throat> yeah, you are, you are nicely uh, clean shaven there, looking, uh, looking almost baby-faced. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought I'd better look good for today. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it... It is the confessional. You've got to dress up when you go to church. That's it. <laughs> so, mate, you actually have some things on the barbecue right now. Tell us what's on the what's in the drums right now. 
Uh, in a drum right now, I've got just some beef ribs. Nice. Are they uh, like a three bone rack or singles? Yeah, there's a couple of three bones in there. I'm just trying a, a different layout to what I normally run for. You know, I think next weekend we're broke. I think we've got beef ribs from memory. Right. Yeah, broke's coming up uh, next weekend. Th- that's always yes, a really big is. festival, isn't it? It is. It is. It's um. Oh, I think due to some different circumstances, it might be a bit smaller this year, but it'll still be good. Yeah, border closures and whatnot might uh, might might limit the attendance. Let's cross fingers yeah. that it all uh, stays open for them because I know that that's a great festival and it just uh, seems to keep setting records every year. Yeah, it's a great little spot. It's well, it's literally in the middle of nowhere to a degree, but it is a town. Yeah, um, it's just outside of Singleton, which is where my dad lives. So I'm I'm quite familiar with Broke. Yeah, it's not a bad um, spot. So those those beef ribs in the drums are they one of your favourite things to cook? I, I don't mind beef ribs. They're, they're very, very easy to cook. Very easy. So those ones I've been out oh, probably half the day so far, and I put them on this morning. So let's just throw them in the drum and let them do their thing. I do love that they are quite a set and forget cut. So do you uh, do you wrap them and all that sort of stuff, or do you just, just let them go? Uh, these ones I'm letting them go just. Just as I said, we're, we're try, I'm trying something a bit different, so I'm just going to let him ride and see what happens. Yeah, very cool, man. That That's how I like to do it as well. Um, okay, so the first thing that I wanted to get into is the name change. So for yep. the last couple of years, you've been Rolling Smoke Barbecue, and now you're yep. a Jack's Creek Barbecue team, although I was um, catching up on all your scores from the ABA competition so far this year, and you've... You kind of do some comps as big as big smoke. Uh, sorry, not big smoke. Sorry, as Roland smoke, and some comps as uh, as Jack's Creek. So, can you tell us a bit about um, about what's happening there? Oh, we had um, so we had one comp from last year before everything got yeah, abandoned. We'll say um, so. We had that plus. I still had. I did two at the start of the year before the actual name change happened. So we just let it ride as that and. Uh, if the wife wants to compete in a comp later in the year, she can use that as her team name. Oh, so she'll use Roland Smoke? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So is that um, due to a, like a sponsorship deal? Like like are you uh, working with Jack's Creek now? To, yeah, so we're, we're, working, we're working with Jack's Creek now. So there's, it's, how do you put it? It's, 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 it's not bad. That's good for me. Um, yeah, there's that. Plus, yeah, I'm going to be, they're moving warehouses, so they'll be doing classes out of Tamworth soon, so I'll be doing them for them. Did you just say Tamworth? Yes. Well, their head office is in Tamworth. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be flying up and back from, from Sydney there to do the classes? No, I just drive. It's only a short drive. I I love how that just sort of just rolls off your tongue because you think nothing of like getting in your truck and driving to the Sunshine Coast for a weekend for a barbecue festival. Sunshine Coast isn't that far. Bundy was a Bundy was a good drive. I'll, I'll 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 give you that much. That was fifteen hours from when I left home to when I got there. Oh my god, I I I can't even fathom that. Is that just like crushed cans of Coca Cola on the on the seat beside you and chocolate bars and all that sort of high energy stuff? Oh, chocolate's not bad, but, you know, I try not to eat too much chocolate these days. But that, yeah, just, yeah, just got to yeah, focus on getting there and relaxing when you do. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, so let's get into your uh, into your ABA comps so far this year. So your your first one was at Kondari when you finished in third place there, and we just discussed how you how you drove there. Um, can you give yep. us a bit of an idea of the of the festival itself? How'd that go down for you? Kandari was great. I've never been there before. There's um, well, I've never really been past, let's say, Brisbane to a degree. So, oh wow! Yeah, getting up there, and <clears throat> I had to pick up meat in Tamworth on the way, so I took the long way there as well. That is the long way, yeah. yeah it was a long way, so it was it was a good drive. It was quite nice, nice drive. Um, Harvey Bay area itself is, is quite a lovely area. It looks like. And um, the comp was set out well. 
it was very spread out in some uh, little hidden spaces. So we were hidden right down the back. You probably wouldn't have even known we were there most of the time. And you were working out of uh, cabins there as well, weren't you? Yeah, so we had cabins. Um, I was parked outside Dan's cabin pretty much next to him, but mine was up a bit further where all the rowdy people were. No it surprises there. <laughs> mm. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, yeah. So was that your, your first time at, at Kondari? Yes. Yep, first time at Kondari. And that was, um, that was 12 months exactly since we did a comp as well. Oh right! So that was your, so that was your yeah. first comp since all the madness started. Correct. Yeah. Wow. That was good. Like, we rocked up there. Yeah, Shane flew in and I drove up. So we rocked up there. Literally all, pretty much all the meat we had frozen in the freezer from meat stock in Melbourne. Oh and, yeah. right. Yeah. So it sat in the freezer for a year. We just got it out and cooked it to the best we could, and yeah. Trimmed all the freezer burn off it. No, well, if you back, if everything's back sealed, so it's not too bad. It usually doesn't burn. Nice, nice. And so from there, then it wasn't much longer uh, after Kondari that you headed to Warwick, which was where yeah. I'd, I had seen you for the first time since I think uh, Kangaroo Valley at the end of 2019. Hadn't seen you in ages. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, and you, I saw that you had your own trailer and all that there, so you drove all the way to Warwick then as well. Yeah. I've done quite a few trips up the New England Highway this year already. Yeah. I did a trip uh, j- just last holidays because my family is in the Hunter Valley and I drove down the Pacific Highway on the coast and yep. then back up the New England Highway and, man, that adds some time. It, it does, but it's not a bad drive. Like, if, you, if you're not in a rush and you just want to cruise and, you know, look at the trees and cows, I guess, it's not bad. Yeah, there's not much else to see other than trees or cows. That's it. Yeah. And so give us an idea about the, the Warwick Barbecue Championships. How'd that go down for you? Um, geez, I've done a few. I can't even remember Warwick. It wasn't, um, it wasn't Warwick. Fourth? What? Fifth? Sixth? Fifth? Uh, Warwick, was, Warwick was sixth. Sixth. So <clears throat> it wasn't bad. I think we won ribs there, which is good. I think from memory. Um, but it wasn't bad. I think. I think what really did me in that weekend was driving 13 hours to Warwick, trying to cook the same night and then drive home the next night. It probably wasn't the best idea. So I was home Sunday morning to go to work, uh, Monday morning to go to work. Wow. So you, so you drove home all night and then basically just had a shower and went to work. I had got three or four hours sleep from memory and went straight to work. Oh, wow, that's insane. I would be an absolute monster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah it wasn't right. Bad. I think from memory, we, um, we had quite a lot of rain there on Sunday. I was going to ask, um, uh, had you left um, by the time the rain set in? So I was cooking my steak as the rain, well, I don't know if you'd call it rain or cyclone, whichever one it was, set in. Uh, then. Literally, all we could do is stand in the rain. There was no way you, where you, you couldn't hide from it. it was, literally, it was everywhere. And it was inch deep running down the hill. I know, because I was downhill from where you were. So it was all coming running into the shed where I was doing cooking demos and things. It was so loud in that metal shed when that storm hit. We had to just stop doing everything because you well, c- I couldn't hear I, got lucky. I, I went out the back of my area, cut through the shed, and popped out the other side. But I still ended up saturated. I was. You know, I was drowning. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, wet pit masters there trying to hurry their boxes to get to the judges through the uh, through the hurricane. <laughs> Very much so. I think I got, I was lucky. I got in, I think I might have been first in or second in. So once I handed steak in, that was it. I was gone. The, throw the kids in the car and uh, head home. You had your kids with you as well? Yeah. Oh, wow. How do they handle like, all, all those big long trips? Uh, sleep. Oh, so you, you, you give them some Benadryl to uh, help them with their coughs when they get in the car? Yeah, they're not too bad. Um, <laughs> besides the annoying iPads, they're not too bad. Yeah, there's not much that can, uh, that can trouble a child when they have an iPad. No, that's true. So from then, it was uh, smoking in the downs, back into Queensland again. 
So you, the yep. first three comps of the year so far have been in Queensland. Uh, you picked up a fifth place there. Now that that was a first time comp as well, uh, put on by um, uh, Grant Coleman, wasn't it? Yeah. Tell yep. us about that comp. That's one I would much rather forget. It was <laughs> I'll tell you the details, but let's just say I'm pretty sure my, the locals set me up. They told me to go to the bakery and get an iced coffee and a pie, so I did that. Then I spent the next twelve hours dying. Oh no! Did you get food poisoning? I was, oh. I was, I was. Let's just say I was dying. Oh, that's terrible. That's the best way to describe it. But lucky, yeah. Dan was there, so while I was dying, he was sorting out all my stuff and getting it ready for me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've I've noticed that you guys um work together quite often and you and you help each other out quite a lot. Yeah. That's great stuff, yeah. And so but but you still managed to pull out a fifth place, which is amazing. In considering the the state I was in, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. When when you're in the kind of condition where you're just looking at the food and you're dry heaving into the back of your mouth, that's uh that's a hard way to 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 do a barbecue competition. Yeah, that that's that's where I was. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've been there twice myself, but it was uh, self inflicted. It wasn't uh, food poisoning. <laughs> now, shortly after that, again uh, was meet in the dilly, and I caught up with you down there, and you were you seemed oh, super yeah. busy, super focused, um, or m- maybe something was going on. I don't know, but you you uh, got a third place there, which was awesome. Yeah, I hate third places. You hate third places. Why is that? Third place doesn't pay the bills. Ah, okay. All right. Fair enough. I I can certainly understand that. Um, yeah. Again, that was a first time festival. Um, I I thought it was fantastic. It was beautiful to be out there in in the middle of the bush. What do you think about it? Dilly was great. It had um, I I likened it to Creekside to a degree. So it was very had a very much Creekside feel, minus you know the creek running next year, but. Yeah, you know, in the in the set up in the trees, pretty much in the country, it was quite nice. It's cold, like Creekside. It was very it cold, yeah. Bad. Yeah, I actually ended up uh, singeing off about half my beard at that festival because uh, on the Saturday night they lit a bonfire, and I was so cold as the as the fire was still really small. I sort of knelt down and like huddled down, sort of right over the fire to try and get as warm as possible, and my beard just went. Woof. <laughs> It was it was it was chilly. I'm, I'm thankful I've got a heater in the trailer. I was uh, heading back to a cabin that uh, had ducted heating, which had been running all day. So that was uh, beautiful to get back in there to that. I'm, I, I I will admit. Yeah. And so after meeting the dilly, we're getting sort of close to catching up to what's happening now. We've got Bundaberg. That and, was uh, Yep. That was uh, yeah seventeenth for that one. Tell us what happened there. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Land was off a bit. Like I'll give it. Well, we've done enough comps to know that when when it's not right, it's not right. Uh, land was pretty good. I thought everything else was, you know, decent. I guess I'd call it. But yeah, judges didn't like it. That's for sure. They definitely so, didn't like the rig that day. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So were they were they new recipes or techniques that you were trialing, or that's just how it panned out? No, like the stuff we cook now is literally the same stuff we've been cooking since 2017, probably. Wow. Okay, just a constant process of refinement. It, oh, it's it's about as refined as it's going to get. I think uh, it's just a it's, it's not it. It's, it's how we use it to a degree. Fair enough. I certainly understand that. Um, so, okay, Bundaberg kind of threw you for six there, but then you backed that up really virtually immediately with a grand champion in Armadale at the, at, at the big chill. And I was super happy to see you got the giant happy Gilmore style check. Yeah. I love my novelty checks. What can I say? (laughs) Yeah. So I, I spent, um, two years living in Armadale, so I know how cold, um, Armadale can get. So I can see why they called it the big chill. Um, I remember uh, 
just for maybe one weekend each winter, it actually snowed there. So oh, tell I me about this, this first of all. So I understand, yeah. So it was, and it was, uh, that comp was, how would you put it? It wasn't snowy, but it was close to it. It was about as cold as I've ever, ever felt it. I think I saw some posts from some uh, competitors saying it was in the negatives. It was minus, minus 5.3, I think it got to. Wow. So that would uh, officially make it even colder than Bangalore. Colder than Bangalore, colder than Creekside. I think Creekside we got down to minus one. Uh, I think Horsham they might have got down to a cold, a cold temperature, but I think minus five is about as cold as I've seen it. Wow, that's insane. So when you're in that kind of negative temperature, how do you handle the fires then, or does it affect the fire at all? Or how does that change your game? So... You know, we use the GMG now and we've got the drums with the flame bosses on them. And like, if you go back to Bundy Comp, we used a lot of charcoal there. Uh, Armadale, where I assumed we would have used a lot of charcoal, we used literally nothing. Really? That's interesting. It was, uh, it was weird. I thought we would have been so cold, I just assumed we would have been literally smashing through charcoal. But I cleaned all the drums out yesterday and... Like two of the charcoal baskets are still full to a degree. Really? Huh. I wonder why that is. Like, would it be oh, something like, like maybe humidity no, in the air up in Bundy because Bundy's in the tropics? I don't know if that would have something to I do with it. I think it would be something along those lines, but oh, it's far too technical for me. Mm. We need to find a, uh, find a charcoal scientist and put that question to them. Definitely. Um, okay, so that was the GC in Armadale. Um, you smashed the ribs there again. I think you got like first place in rib uh, in pork ribs. Um, yeah, first place ribs, perfect three hundred as well. Which that's is right. Always yes, nice get, always nice to get a three hundred. Um, doesn't happen a lot but when they do. They're quite nice. I think we've got I think we've got three in total now, which is you know, not a bad tally. Um, that and I think what else we get second in chicken, I think, uh, third in beef and seventh in lamb, something like that. So it was it was a good good day. Yeah, very good. Yeah, top top ten in in every uh, category. Yeah, Usually, very yeah, good. That's that's what. Well, you know, people probably go and try to win every category, but if you top ten everything, you're generally going to be at the pointy end of the field. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's very often that you'll see teams kind of they want to try and make every every hand in a hero hand in, and uh, they end up just getting distracted by one thing, and then they end up dropping that one so low that it ruins the rest of their chances. I guess is a good way of putting it. Um, but yeah. yeah, like like you said, and this was the topic of the very first podcast we ever did was consistency is king. Yeah. So if you can consistently get in the top ten for across the board, then you got a good shot at the, at the uh, title. That's correct. Dilly was a good example of that for us. It was, um, I think we top 10 everything except the chicken, where we come 31st. And we still managed to third overall, which is, which in, you know, in my head, that's not a bad result at the end of the day. It is good, yeah, for sure. Now, what happened with that chicken, 31st in chicken? Um. Power on, power off, power on, power off, power uh, on, power okay. off. Chicken tasted like, uh, tasted terrible. I can tell you that. <laughs> tasted like something that had been cooked for a while and then not, and then cooked for a while and then not. <laughs> I, I could smell how bad it tasted. That's how good it was. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was not great. Yeah, yeah. What do we do? Yep. That, that's, that's it. It's part of concerts. We deal with that. It is, yeah. You just got to kind of roll with it, don't you? Yeah. So that brings us up to last weekend and Smokefest on the Gold Coast. And you were doing something a little bit different there. Tell us what you're doing at Smokefest. Uh, I was just five fi help for Dan, really. So we were supposed to have Gloucester that weekend and it sort of never went ahead. So I'm like, oh, well. I'll, I'll have a weekend off from cooking technically and go up and help Dan and, you know, try and get some steak points back, I guess, since my uh, failure at Armadale. 
but it wasn't too bad. It, was, it actually worked out well. So there was four categories. Actually, there was five, including crocodile. I don't know, the Aussie protein, but you know, we won't include that because it was terrible. Oh, okay. So we all had a category each to do, and yeah, we, it seemed to work really well. Okay, that's good. The judges didn't like it, but it seemed to work well. Ha. Huh. Yeah, it's it's something that I've um, been saying that I would love to see for a while is some of these uh, indigenous meat categories. Um, and I think if we had enough competitions doing it, then we'd start to see some some really interesting things happening. But I was really happy to see that um, that, that Smokefest was given that a go uh, for the first time because I don't think... It was, it, was, I, it was very challenging. Like, I think the, the choice was kangaroo, emu or crocodile. So we went with the crocodile option Never really, you know, I don't think I've ever caught crocodile in my life. Um, and when we got it, it was, it was less than appealing, that's for sure. <laughs> Did you do like but a this, tail this, fillet or something? I, I don't know what it was. It was just crocodile meat of some description. It was like thin, flat, scraggly bits of meat that you really couldn't do a lot with. Some people seem to have done all right with it. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, what can we do? Put some rub on it, throw it in a smoker and hand it in. <laughs> See what happens, yeah, yeah. Interesting, yeah. I I think when it comes to something like uh, like alligator or crocodiles, from the people I've spoken to, it's either um, tail or legs because that's pretty much the only or, – um, or jowls. Apparently they have pretty, pretty decent meat in the jowls, but apart from that, there's virtually nothing else anywhere on them. Yeah. So I've, I've had gator before many times, but I've never cooked it myself and it's always been deep fried, which is you know, always good. Yeah. Trying yeah. to cook it in the smoker was a, it was a challenge, I guess. Yeah, I think I've seen, um, the people that I've seen doing alligator in a smoker always seem to wrap it all in bacon. Yeah. Yeah. So that it tastes like something. Like a, imagine like a, a smashed out chicken breast. That's what it looked like. Oh, but okay. At the same time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, how do you like FIFOing it versus driving? Um, I didn't mind FIFO. It, was, it was, wasn't too bad. Uh, it was probably easier at the end of the day, I guess, because I didn't have to tow everything around or up the freeway, back down the freeway. I could just get on a plane and relax. Um, but in saying that, you know, I'd probably much rather have all my stuff there and do the comp. But definitely, like, like was, it was good. It was, you know, for, for that weekend and for what we had to do, it was, it was good. Yeah, it must be nice to be able to, uh, to, to cook on your own gear. Now, I'm, I'm just looking back at, at what we've just been talking about today, and Warwick was a first-time comp. Smoking in the Downs was a first-time comp. Meat in the Dilly was a first-time comp. The Big Chill, I think, was a first-time comp as well. Yeah, and Smoke Fest was a first time comp. So of the seven comps you've done so, or seven the seven ABA comps that you've done so far, five of them have been first time events, which is absolutely incredible to see that uh, despite everything that happened last year, we're still seeing this growth in the in the scene, yeah. and people are still keen to put on competitions. That's it. It's good. Like last year was it was it was good in its ways, but it was also bad in its ways for us. Um, but yeah, having new comps is good. And hopefully, a lot of them are re- returning next year. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All righty. So, we've just covered your, your year in the ABA so far. And so I thought we might jump across now and look at the SCA because um, the other thing that you love to do as well is you love to get into your SCA competitions. And yep. I want to um, – do you do the ancillaries as well or are you kind of focused on the steak? Uh, I try to focus on steak, but occasionally we do an ancillary or two. And we don't – well, I don't tend to put a lot of effort into ancillaries, that's for sure. Why is that? And occasionally, occasionally I forget to put a lot of effort into steak as well. <laughs> So which which ancillary categories kind of grab your attention? Uh, none of them. 
<laughs> so, so then how do you decide which which comps you're going to do um, uh, and ancillaries or not? It's, it's probably more to do with the, the timeline of the comp itself. Uh, so which one was it? One of them had steak first. I can't remember. One of the comps had steak first, which was handy. So we got in, we got steak done, and then we had time to do ancillaries. I don't even remember what we did. I think it was Dilly, maybe. Was it? No, that was steak away. Wait. Anyway, it was Warwick. It Could have been Warwick. Mm. No, was it Warwick? I don't remember. One of the comps I've done. I've lost track. <laughs> uh, it, it really depends on how much time we've got and, you know, what we've got available. And, you know, usually... We just wing it to a degree, or I do. Shane puts a little bit more effort in than I do. Dan definitely puts a lot more effort in. So, um, yeah, it depends. Sometimes, you know, I have an idea at home for a burger that I'll try, then I'll try doing that at the SCA. But other than that, if it's things like um, hot dogs, I usually don't bother doing. Uh, Tacos, I really won't bother doing too much. Uh, but I think, what have we got? This weekend we've got tacos and chili at Bro. Chili will be so, interesting. Chili will be, I'm going to do the chili one. Uh, only because I've already got some stuff sort of pre-made in the freezer that'll work perfectly for it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's the, and a joy of having, you know, a good brisket sponsor. I've got plenty of brisket trim. Yeah, no doubt about that at all. That's one of our favourite things to do with brisket trim as well. Uh, that well, and good. and bolognese. Oh, you know what? I think I had enough bolognese when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I um I really love blending some um some of the offcuts from some pork ribs with some brisket, and then just rough grinding that and using that in bolognese. I find that gives like a real yeah. nice consistency, like a nice uh, mouthfeel to it. Yeah. Really interesting stuff. Well, that's the only thing having a good butcher about five minutes away as well as <clears throat> all my brisket trim goes through his mincer. Oh, very handy. Very useful yeah. indeed. Yeah. Now, I, I want to jump in the way back machine here. And um, I, I know that I did say that we were going to talk about this year, but I want to kick off with um, sheep stock last year. So you had mentioned yes. that, that you had a whole lot of uh, meat left over. So obviously you had gone down to compete at meat stock. And yeah. um, unfortunately, that got called off because of all the madness. And so then everybody went out to uh, Sheepy's place to uh, yeah. to do to put on an impromptu barbecue competition in his backyard on his property there. So tell us about that um, that that uh, impromptu competition. What can we say? Sheepy's a legend for that. Uh, I don't know. Somehow it all just worked, and everyone sort of turned up there and just cooked meat in his backyard, and we all had a good time doing it. Uh, it wasn't bad. So all the Americans were here to cook as well, so it gave them a, a, a option to actually be able to cook instead of you know just going back to their hotel and looking for a flight home. Uh, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, again, I think I did. I got a first, and I think a last steak. Oh wow! There. I think that's what it was. So it was a good and a bad day for me. I take a lot of pride in. Uh, beating the Americans down there. I'll bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what sort of separates a first place and a last place steak? Like what what sort of what sort of goes wrong in the in the two thirty minute windows between the first and the last place? I mean, was it was it overdone? Did you accidentally put a seafood rub on it by mistake or No, usually it's it's operator error. Um, that was definitely operator error it's on yeah, for me. I, I think I just probed it in the wrong spot and it was saying it was cooked and it definitely wasn't. Oh, right. It was underdone. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's I, can, really the way to do it. I can see how that would get you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, someone is, uh, is actually popping up here in the comments. I don't usually do this till later, but they've been quite adamant. They want to talk to you about string. They've got hashtag string gate here. And then someone else has written string. What, what's with that? Uh, that was the big chill in Armadale. Oh, that okay. Was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a pretty good steak. Uh, Demi was nice enough to write my scores down for me just so I could see where it would have scored. 
had I not left the stream. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that would, um, so that's a, like an instant DQ, is it? Yeah, that's a DQ. That's a rookie mistake, we call it. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to be heartbreaking. Oh, this, I had a few quiet minutes to myself back in the train line. Because I knew I'd done it when I got back there because I could only find one string. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I could just imagine you getting back to the trailer and just shutting all the doors and windows and then from the outside, all, all anyone can see is just the, the trailer like shaking backwards and forwards and the sound of things smashing. No, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was quiet time. That's what it was. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, now, the SCA results... Um, they're a little bit trickier to find than the ABA results. So if I forget a comp, just let me know and, and we'll and we'll fill it in. Um, the next one that I saw after Sheepstock was Warwick and yeah. where you, you came in with a fifth. And we already talked about that with the Storm um, yeah. and, and the hand is all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, getting a fifth in those conditions is incredibly, incredibly big achievement. Yeah, like it was literally – didn't matter where we moved the the hasty bake to, it, it was just getting wet. So I had I you know, had Dan standing one side of me and my wife the other side, just trying to keep the rain off it as much as we could while I attempted to cook a steak. So you literally had human shields there protecting the barbecue. That was the only way to keep the rain off it. Oh, oh. now I I actually saw that that little hasty bake, which was which was the first time that that I'd ever seen one at uh, at meeting the dilly, and I was talking to Shane about it. Um, yep. t- tell us about the, the hasty bake. How do you like it? How did you come across them? Um, what does it do that, that other grills don't all that sort of stuff? Uh, hasty bakes. It, it, it's great. It, it cooks a steak so good. Um, it's one of those things once it's like any, you know, pit barbecue grill to any degree. Once you learn how to use it and, and you know how it works, you sort of, you delight it. And you come back half an hour later and you cook a steak on it and it usually turns out pretty good. Okay, cool. Is it like a, is it particularly economical? Um... Uh, so we use, we use probably not a lot of charcoal. So we use the B&B in it. Um, Cause it's one of those things that we know how much of this to use in it. It's got to be lit, you know, a certain time before. So it's ready to go. Um, it uses next to nothing, but it does. That thing will stay hot for so long. It's one. It's it's really efficient. Oh, okay, so is it it's um, it's not insulated. I know, but it it, it kind of responds as if it were. Yeah, I I don't know how or why, but like you know, if you've got a PK and you you put charcoal in it, and, you know, you cook a steak and go back an hour later, it'll be next to out. Um, that hasty just keeps going and going and going and going for hours. Wow, cool, yeah. And it kind of packs up like a little toolbox or like a little fishing tackle box. Yeah, it's great. So um, Kyle from Rub and Grub, he made us some little custom steak presses so everything fits under the lid. Uh, so everything literally fits in, in, in the top of it that we need. Very handy. Yeah, you could almost just sort of pack that in your carry-on on the plane as you're doing all these FIFO competitions around the country. You almost got it. it. Might just be a little bit too heavy with all the gear, but it wouldn't be far off. Yeah, I I can just imagine that, like carrying this barbecue onto the plane. Everyone's like, "What? What is that?" <laughs> That'll be pretty funny. Um, and then smoke fest here on the Gold Coast, sixth in steak and first in desserts. What did you do for the dessert? Uh, I'm sworn to secrecy. I'm, I can't tell you. Oh, okay. Um, all right. But with Seven Eleven love to sponsor me. I, I got everything from Seven oh. <laughs> Eleven. So it was just like a jam donut that you cut into six pieces. Well, I can't tell you. It's a <laughs> secret. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And you, uh, you got a, a sixth in steak there as well. Yeah, I think yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and that was cooking on somebody else's stuff. You you five folded it now. Um, so Dan's got a hasty as well, which makes. I suppose my life easy. So Dan's got hasty and when was it? I think it was Bundy. I took up four bags of um, B&B for him. So he's got everything that I need if I ever want to cook a steak. Those, uh, those gifts you gave him were quite convenient. Yeah, yeah. 
means to always. Always to means, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did I miss any uh, SCA comps there? Uh, you mentioned Armadale before. We talked about Stringgate. Uh, Dilly. Did we do Dilly? We did um, SCA Dilly, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. We talked about sixth place there, and that and that got us into the hasty bake. At the Dilly? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. I've lost track. That's all right. That's all good. That's all good. So, now, how many golden tickets do you have so far? Uh, I've, I've got two steak and one ancillary now. Very handy. Very nice. And so, are you planning on heading over there next time? Uh Travel restrictions, yeah. I, I had a look the other day. It doesn't look like it's actually that hard to get there and you know do whatever you want. It's the, the getting back part which seems hard. Yeah, I, I think that's um that's a fair analysis there. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think they mind you coming over. I think it's the coming home part that's the tricky part. Yeah, that seems like the difficult part at this point in time. So we'll just have to wait and you know, we'll go when we have the opportunity to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although... To be honest, two weeks alone in a hotel room doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> oh, well, it's probably not that bad. It's probably the bill you get afterwards. It's the bad yeah. part. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All the all the room service and the uh, the movie rentals and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nice. Um. So, what's the the most creative hand in that you've ever done? Creative SCA. Yeah. Um, mm. so probably Creekside, the last Creekside. This is this is where I refer back to not putting in a lot of effort. Uh, me, my, me and Shane weren't going to do the ancillaries, but we got, you know, distracted and bored and thought we'd do something. So we walked. Where we go? Down to the local uh, fish and chip shop. So I think there's two in, at uh, Warwick Nabil. We tried both and figured out which one had the best deep fried fish and went back the next day, got some fish and some, uh, what is it, some plastic cheese from the local IGA and some cold slaw, I think we put on it. With mayonnaise and just some dodgy old burger buns. And that was, uh, that was it. It was actually surprisingly tasty for a terrible burger. Yeah, right. Sounds like a bit of a tribute to the uh, fillet of fish at McDonald's. It was very much like a fillet of fish, just worse. <laughs> but worse. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And um, the uh, the string gate, was that the, the biggest disaster that you've ever had? Um, for SCA, yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's disaster, rookie move, you know. Blame myself for it. Should have, shouldn't have done it, but I did. But it's good. It works like, you know, it works out in the end because now I put a process in place for myself so I don't do it again. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. Alrighty, so now we are in the the third segment of our show here, which is our our lesson time and our Q and A time. So if people have been uh, been watching online, if they're joining us online, uh, now's the time to start really plugging those questions into the comments. And after Lucas has shared his lesson with us, then we're going to start um, running those questions by him as well. So start popping them in the comments, and I will uh, make a note to bring them up on the screen. So, mate, it is your turn now. You're going to share with us some tips for staying organised to hit every comp on two circuits because you do all the SCA, well, almost all the SCAs and almost all the ABA. So, mate, share your wisdom. So, my my basic plan is, and I was telling Ben this before, you can't really see it here at the moment, but I'm surrounded by barbecue gear at the moment in my kitchen. Uh, Off to my left, I've got all my gastro pans, Cloth bottles ready to go. My steak box is over there ready to go. Uh, it's all got to be, you know, repacked, check all the rubs, check everything, make sure it's there, make sure there's enough there. Uh, sauce bottles, this bench I'm on will look like a science lab in about half an hour. Uh, everything sort of, when I get to a comp, is pre-made, ready to go, labelled, 
so I, it makes my life easy. So if I'm using, you know, if it comes to beef, I have a beef injection bottle, which is, you know, clearly labeled beef injection, uh, beef wrap bottle, which is very similar to the injection, but slightly different. Um, all the rubs, there's two different rubs on our beef. So we have a beef one and a beef two. So obviously beef one we use first, beef two we use second. Uh, and that's it. So when I get to a comp, I'll have the rub box out, ready to go. Everything's in line, in order. Uh, I made a mistake with sauce once. I put the wrong sauce into the wrong, on the wrong protein, which actually worked for my advantage once. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes, so now, um, I think it was actually Shane gave me the idea is when it comes to sauce time, especially on the top bunk in the trailer, I move everything off and um, put the four pans down on the right. So chicken one, I put chicken sauce bottle in that and whatever's next. So lamb, right lamb on the tart, on the foil container and the lamb sauce bottle goes into that one. So it's almost a full, almost foolproof plan. Um, all our meat um, cut is trimmed, ready to go. Uh, not very often I have, we have to trim anything. If anything, I, I leave lamb and to do it a comp, uh, only because it's you know, time consuming and we've usually got a bit of time on a Saturday night, I guess you'll call it, before we cook. Um, but other than that, like all my briskets, uh, trimmed and backpacked in the freezer ready to go beef ribs are the same they're all trimmed off the bone ready to go and um, backpack um, scotty who does all our other meat he's um his ribs are always banging so they're usually pre-packed backpacked ready to go and yeah it's little things like chicken i usually do two three weeks in advance uh, have it already uh, wrapped up in the freezer so i put it in a, a gastro jack gastro pan so it doesn't get squashed in the esky. Um, it'll go in there frozen and by the time we need to use it, it should be nicely defrosted. So it's all all about being organized. Um, all the smokers are, are cleaned, they're loaded, so they're already well, broke next weekend. They're already loaded with charcoal and wood. So all I've literally got to do is stick the look lighter in and light it. Oh, wow. Um, it's just, just things like that, like everything's pre-organized, pre-planned, ready to go. And you make make your life as easy as possible when you get to a comp. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, and so do you have like a checklist for that? Do you are you that anal about it? Oh, like I've got the only thing I really have checklists for is um, well, I wouldn't even call it checklists. Like rub and sauce recipes are written down. Everything else is just you you, you know you you've got to do it. Okay, cool. And when you are uh, storing things in your house for the competitions, do you have like a comp box and it's got written on a comp box and you've got your comp gear so you're not having to like dig through the kitchen to find things before the competition and then you've got to dig through and put them back in the kitchen again and all that sort of stuff? Do you have like separate sets? The only stuff that sort of is, is you know, comp stuff that's actually in my kitchen, that lives in the kitchen, I should say, is my, my measuring cup. Um, I'm very particular about my measuring cup. Uh, I've used the same measuring cup for the last six years, I guess. Um, so there's that and uh, a little funnel and then just, you know, stainless steel bowls that I mix everything in. Otherwise, everything else is already in the trailer ready to go. Very cool, yeah. So the uh, the secret to success is the lucky measuring cup then? I'm, I'm very particular about my measuring cup. <laughs> I, I'm I'm the same way about my measuring spoons. I had a beautiful set of like stainless steel measuring spoons that all nested inside each other like Russian dolls and no idea where they are. Nobody knows where they are. Drives me no. bonkers. No, no, it's just well, it's one of those things like I know, you know, when I make everything, one cup of this is the same as it's been since, you know, ever. So it's it's the measuring cup that I use for everything. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Some uh, some good advice hiding in there for us. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a couple of questions here that are popping up. Um, the first one, we're going to go with, uh, what's your favorite comp to compete at? Oh, I would definitely say Creekside would definitely be the top of my list of all-time favorites. Um, 
That was good. It was always a good comp. There's there's nothing ever bad about Creekside except for that one time it was really cold. But other than that, that would be my favourite, I reckon. Yeah, right. I I hear that um quite a lot actually. I I never made it down to a Creekside, but I have heard that they were really good comps. They were they were they were just they were good. They were good. Yeah, yeah. And the other question that's come in um is how has been how has the change been from offset to drums? What was the learning curve like? Um, there's, there was no real learning curve, I guess, to a degree. Uh, my original smoker was a, an, an ugly drum. Um, so yeah, smoker one was an ugly drum. Smoker two was an ugly drum with a Weber lid. Uh, it still lives outside. I've still got it there. Uh, so drums was not much of a learning curve because it's what I learned to cook on. Uh, I guess more than anything was learning how to make everything fit in the drums. So, you know, we have a lot less real estate than we used to, but we seem to make it work. Yeah, and so what was the uh, the the reason for that change? Uh, it was more, you know, space saving and weight saving more than anything. Uh, and, and to make it easy on myself. So it's, it's much easier to, you know, lift the drum out and carry it out of the trailer than, you know, try and push a... You know, whatever they are, three, four hundred kilo offset in and out of a trailer. Yeah, but di- didn't you actually have like a trailer mounted smoker, or am I confusing that with somebody else? No, that was yeah. We had the old Bullockhead thirty inch. That was that was a good smoker. That was a beast of a thing. Uh, we could cook stuff in that really quick. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was, it was more of a thing like. Oh, I'm getting too old to be, you know, setting up marquees and hanging up banners and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, I, I need creepy comforts in my older years. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I uh, unfortunately completely understand and agree. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, all righty. So now it's probably a good time for me to uh, throw the studio over to you for some, uh, for some shout outs, give some thanks to people that you'd like to say thank you to and just re- Remind all the listeners and viewers where they can track you down on the internet nowadays. Um, so you can find me mostly on Facebook when I'm not banned. Um, or you can just look up Ted. Ted's a good guy too. Uh, otherwise, Instagram, I spend most of my time on there, I guess. So it's just uh, rolling, what is it? Rolling Smoke Barbecue underscore Lucas from memory. I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, other than that, that's about it. So yeah, as for us, you know, people that help us get, to all our comps, um, mainly our, my wife, you know, Shane, um, Dan. Dan's always helps me out. Shane's always there. Um, where is it? Yeah. Jesse, Seven Fins, Barbecue Superstore guys, always great to me. Um, Scotty East Blacks and Butchery, he's the biggest legend that I, I know. Uh, without him, I'd, I, I definitely couldn't do this. And without Jack's Creek as well. It's just, you know, without all of them combined, there's no way we could do this. And we are greatly appreciated. Yeah, it, it certainly does take a village, doesn't it? Uh, it does, like, especially the amount of comps we, like, this this year, we were, we were supposed to do this year last year, but, of course, we couldn't for obvious reasons. So, so I had it all planned to do last year, so I've been lucky in a way that, you know, rubs and sauces, glazes, I, I was stocked up for the eyeballs ready to go. Uh, I've only just now run out of the seven sin sauce, so hopefully that turns up sooner than later. Jesse, I know you're watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure you get that order in soon because the uh, customs has taken a while. Oh, it's it's brutally slow out here. But, yeah, as I like, so, yeah, everyone's been great. And, you know, we had a plan this year to, to hit it hard and we're doing that and it's, slowly starting to pay off, I guess. It took us a while to get back into the groove of it, but we're, I think we're back there. So, you know, no more 17th place finishes. We should be fine. Excellent. Well, mate, best of luck coming up next weekend with Broke, and uh, thank you for coming on board the show again. Done, buddy. appreciate the time. It's been great again. And there you have it, family. That was Lucas Armstrong of uh, the Jack's Creek Barbecue team, formerly Roll and Smoke uh, Barbecue as well. And that was interesting that he said that his wife might compete. 
um, under Roll and Smoke. That would be quite interesting to have them competing side by side and, and uh, have, a, have a bit of a husband-wife cook-off um, competing against each other would be quite interesting. Now, as I said, he does a ton of competitions. Um, I think when I spoke to him about a year ago, episode 89, he had done 17 or 19 competitions in 2019. And we're just recording this in the first weekend of June. And he's already uh, at least seven ABA comps down. So he's obviously uh, hitting it at full steam again this year. Um, okay, so now before I let you go, just a quick reminder, if you are looking to get your barbecue message out into the masses, if you're running a barbecue business and you need some help to uh, to get your message out there, do send me an email, ben at smokinghotconfessions.com, and we'll have a chat about podcast partners. Um, our, e- our ebook is available for you for free over on the website, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. So if you're at the start of your barbecue journey, we've got you covered there as well. To the people who've joined us online today in the Smoking Hot Confessions community on Facebook, thank you very much for joining us. Um, some of the comments I had to uh, not bring onto the screen. Um, Lucas has a couple of friends who uh, uh, have large personalities. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. Um, but it, it's been very entertaining for me all the same. Um, and do come join us if you would like to come out and just hang out there as well. And however you are watching this today, do give us the likes, the shares, the comments, the follows. It all helps us out. And as I said before, we're starting to see some um, huge success on the podcast charts in the food category because of all those uh, five-star ratings and reviews that you have been giving us. So I think that is about all the time uh, that we have today. So I think that's about all the time we have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions.